If you look at Kemit's position and you look at the players in his position and the role that he plays at the moment, if I bring Kemit here, or if the coach says Kemit must come here now, obviously it means one player must be sacrificed in that position. And if you look at the team last season and if you look at the team that we have now here, we spoke about the harmony. He's a good player, he's a talented player, he's a quality player, yes. Who do I remove from that position? Coach, the coach says, yes, I want him here. If he comes from his team, being number one player, regular player in his team, will he be prepared to come and sit on the bench and fight for the position the Kaz achieves? Those are questions we ask ourselves. And we have to do justice to ourselves and say, do we really need Kemi to come and sit on the bench at Kaz achieves? It's a question that we all ask ourselves. Does the coach need that type of a player? That yeah. the coach will answer, but I think we've had discussions along that. And finally, we, we agreed that we're not going to go for Kemi to Rasmus. We're not not because he's a bad player or he's not a good player, no, but because we looked at, I spoke about the harmony in the team at first. Whilst it's business, we need results, we need delivery. But we looked at the type of players that are in this position. Would we then sacrifice in that role? So it's nice to have 24 top national players or international players in the team, but then you have problems because you only, can only play 11 players on the day. And uh, the coach wants to have that harmony. I think he'll speak for himself on, on the issue of Kimmich. Last season, uh, in as much as we're looking forward to the next season, which is more challenging than last season, we did make certain acquisitions of players to bolster the team. And uh, together with the coach, we had a discussion at the end of the season, looking at the success of last season, looking at the challenges ahead, that uh, how are we going to deal with the issue of beefing up the squad, you know, making sure that we, we sustain the performance and, and, and the success. The biggest challenge in success is uh, firstly to keep the harmony in the team, the spirit, the, the, the harmony around the team, and making sure that people also have confidence and we show them confidence and give them confidence. Uh, how do we deal with that? That was the first challenge that we, we looked at with the coach. And also we looked at the needs of the club and analysis in terms of the acquisitions that we might acquire if we need to, to beef up. And obviously looking at the, the structure of the team last season and, uh, and, and, and until the end of the season, we had to make certain uh, concessions to say that if you look at the success and look at the balance of the team and everything, we have few one or two positions that we need to fill in. But also so how do we fill in those positions was another challenge. Do we go crazy like everybody's going crazy in the market or do we take our time? Are we under pressure to make those acquisitions? Are we desperate to actually bolster the team? We looked at the final things. Firstly, we looked at the striking force, which is why we brought Musona back, to beef up the striking force and to give you know more support up front. Currently, we're looking at definitely beefing up at the back and uh, we're doing it. I think with caution and we're doing it properly. We're not doing it hastily. We're not doing it emotionally. Um, the season is only starting in August. We've got time till the winter period and we've got time again till the uh, January period because as you know, our challenge is it's Africa again, going to Africa. So we need the coach is to have a balanced squad that would assist locally and internationally because the traveling will also affect us. Now, looking at that again, it's a question of balancing the team. You get top players, uh, players who have their own right in their clubs coming here again to add on the top players that we have here will create harmony. It becomes a challenge. Also introducing a couple of one or two youngsters, introducing them into the squad as backup for the senior players who are there now without putting them under pressure because, for instance, we've got a Simpiwe youngster that comes from a, a development side. He's a youngster who's going to be looking up to Tsepo Masilela, who's going to be looking up to Keegan Ritchie. Are we putting him under pressure? Are we going to launch him? make big announcements, put him under pressure to play. Are we destroying the player? Are we managing the player? So we're doing it with caution. I think that's one of the things that we need to understand the plan of the coach and ours to say we are going to be introducing some youngsters at a later stage, but we're doing it gradually, cautiously. And uh, that's how we planned it with the coach. I think in the season or going forward, we will be making one or two introductions again of, of one or two players, but we're not doing it out of emotion again or out of excitement because everybody's in the market. We're doing it together with the coach, taking our time, doing proper assessments as well, age-wise as well, looking at what we have and what we need to have and also looking at what we don't have in the team. Not because somebody's buying players, now we must also run and go into the market. We had two or three teams approaching us for, for, for his services, but uh, you know sometimes this type of things also the player must go where he wants to go. It's not force major that we, we are contacted to him, we loan him, he has to go. We're still waiting for him to make up his mind and tell us where he wants to go. He said uh, he'll go where he sat, tells him to go, so we'll wait for him. We are patient, like we say, it's still criticism for all the clubs and everybody. We're waiting for him to come back to us to tell us which option he wants to take. I mean, there are three clubs that are interested in him at the moment. Platinum Stars, um, Ajax were interested and uh, uh, Aces. So 
we've got we've agreed terms with all those clubs, so it's a question of him coming to to say to us, I really want to go here or there. But uh, we're not putting him under pressure like the coach is saying. When Abia came to me, it was his initiative, and and we discussed, and he was having problems not playing more games, and and he knew that I showed a little bit of faith with him in the beginning, and then for certain reasons he he went off the boil, and the team was doing well, and that's football. And Abia couldn't really deal with that, and then the situation we've got now is that well, can he deal with that again if he was to come back and and sit on the bench, and we're going to get another conversation in in six or seven weeks? So you know that's the way that's the way things work, and it isn't that I mean I like Abia as a player, and. Uh, <laughs> But at Kaiser Chiefs, you've got to you've got to know that every player is burning to stay at the club, and not if you don't play, then maybe I should leave. So I think this is just an actual part of football, and I think mm. Bobby's handling that, and uh, I just give Bobby my recommendations technically. Let's take, for example, Lincoln, and let's take, for example, uh, Stambisa. You look at the squad, and you look at the players, and both of those players didn't play as much as they wanted to play showed a great attitude but there are limits to what attitude you can you can expect from a player if we'd have kept if we'd have kept them on and, the, and they'd have played another one game out of the first 10 games we may have had players that weren't happy to be here players that were demotivated and so you don't make the, the decision well no he should be loaned out because because you don't want the player sometimes you try to rekindle the player's interest and and you try to do what's best for both him and in the long run probably what's best for the squad because then you retain players that are burning for, for the squad and Abia also Abia came to me in the beginning of last year Bobby I remember I think it was the Christmas party and he, and he said look coach you know maybe I should be loaned out because I've, I need to play some more games and that's how that started you know so I can't see us being uh, we've thought about what players can handle their role at the club now and I think that's about where we're at but sometimes you don't do it because you don't want the player you do it because it's best for both the player and the and the squad